Today's topic, comprehending cardiac medications, ACE inhibitors. Today we're gonna to be going deeper to master pharmacology with comprehending and deeply understanding ACE inhibitors. Now for cardiac medications such as ACE inhibitors, there's two things that the nurse must know to deeply understand this medication. First, understand and not just parrot or memorize the mechanism of action. And secondly, how does this medication impact and affected by the determinants of cardiac output that include heart rate, preload, afterload, contractility, stroke volume, with the net impact is how does it affect the workload of the heart. So let's look at the mechanism of action of an ACE inhibitor. Now using Davis drug, one of my favorite nursing drug handbooks, an ACE inhibitor, such as lisinopril, which is what we'll use in today's example, is a plasma protein. Renin is, a, or I should say this, renin, a plasma protein, is secreted by the kidneys when blood pressure falls in any low cardiac output state, such as heart failure or shock. This then converts the inactive liver protein, angiotensin, to angiotensin 1. The conversion of angiotensin 2 is enhanced by what we call the angiotensin converting enzyme or abbreviated ACE. This is from the lungs and is one of the most potent vasoconstrictors in the body. And the effects of angiotensin 2 are going to obviously cause profound vasoconstriction of the arterioles and veins, but how is that going to affect the determinants of cardiac output? It's going to increase our afterload or systolic blood pressure. Angiotensin II also stimulates the sympathetic or fight and flight nervous system. This is also going to obviously increase the workload of the heart by increasing heart rate as well as blood pressure. The effects of angiotensin II also cause water retention by the kidneys due to the secretion of aldosterone, a hormone secreted by the adrenal glands, and that's going to cause an increase in our preload. And so let's kind of mark these here as we go along here. We're going to increase our preload. We're going to increase our afterload with ACE2 or angiotensin II and therefore, we don't want that. We need to block that conversion. And ACE inhibitors block that conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, which we do not want, but yet will help the body in any other. If you're in shock, you want angiotensin 2 to save your life. If you're in heart failure, this is really counterproductive and the normal physiologic effect is actually going to worsen a patient with end-stage heart failure. So therefore, what do we want to do with this? Let's look at how an ACE inhibitor then affects the determinants of cardiac output. Now, does an ACE inhibitor like a beta blocker have any impact on the heart rate itself? When we look at our formula of cardiac output, our cardiac output moment by moment is influenced by the stroke volume, what's in the ventricles times the heart rate. Does an ACE inhibitor affect the heart rate in any way by its mechanism of action by blocking the conversion of angiotensin one to angiotensin two? The answer is no. Therefore, there really is no reason to assess the heart rate unless you choose to as part of your assessment and vital signs, but it's not really gonna be affected by an ACE inhibitor. Secondly, does an, angio, does an ACE inhibitor affect our preload? By inhibiting the secretion of aldosterone and water retention, absolutely it decreases through mild diuresis as well as venous dilation. So therefore we get a lowered preload and what's coming to the right side of the heart in the volume of the tank through venodilation is going to be impacted and that's going to benefit the patients uh, by decreasing the workload of the heart. Afterload, this is where ACE inhibitors are one of the strongest 
and the most effective medications for lowering blood pressure and heart because it's blocking that conversion. It has a double effect on really lowering afterload, which is your systolic blood pressure. And so this is the strength and one of the primary effects of an ACE inhibitor. Does it affect contractility? Really not so much. There's no obvious impact to contractility. Stroke volume is going to be impacted slightly by the decreased preload, but it's minimal. And so therefore, when you look at an ACE inhibitor, it's going to overall decrease the workload of the heart as it lowers preload, but more importantly, this is its big lowering afterload through veno and arterial dilation. I want you to know my students in the clinical setting struggled with really deeply understanding and situating the physiology of cardiac medications, not just ACE inhibitors, but beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, etc., to clinical practice. I created a six-page handout that is yours if you choose to download it from my website, keithrn.com, and there's a link on this YouTube. Please feel free to access that and strengthen your knowledge. I also have a resource that I've written for students titled, Think Like a Nurse, Practical Preparation for Professional Practice. It's really my heart of 30 plus years of nursing practice to emphasize what's most important. And this came from chapter five, pharmacology content you need to master. I'm really kind of a need to know guy as it relates to content. And we can simplify a lot of things in nursing education if we focus on what is need to know versus nice to know. I also wanted to basically, as we look at nursing education, I brought some friends with me. Oh, I can't even barely lift them. This is about 25 pounds of textbooks. And all it really includes is a med surge, a patho text, fundamentals, and your lab and your drug handbook. By the time that a student completes nursing education, this stack will be a couple more volumes when you add your OB, mental health, and your PEDS text. Can a student really realistically master everything in a textbook? No. We as educators need to help our students by focusing on what is the most important need to know content in nursing education. It's my heart through these videos, my website, my book, and all that I do to strengthen student learning so that our students are not only well prepared to pass a multiple choice test called the NCLEX, but more importantly, they're well prepared for clinical practice. Thank you.